Hey guys, how's it going? Marine King here. The Grand Tournament Pre-Review Part 3. Today I'm going to be covering the Priest cards and the Rogue cards. Um, I'm going to try to get through this rather quickly, but if you don't want to watch this whole video, you can look at the vid description at the bottom and see uh, the scores that I gave for each card really quickly. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so as of right now all the cards have been released so I had a chance to look at everything uh, that's been revealed and uh, give it some thought and give it accurate ratings uh, based upon what I predict uh, up first are the priest cards convert two mana spell put a copy of an enemy minion in your hand well right off the bat I'll tell you I really don't like this very much and the reason why is because um, what priests needed in general were cards that are not reactive. Uh, priest players have been begging for cards that are less reactive and a little more proactive. And this is about as reactive as you can get. Most of the time, this is going to sit in your hand as a dead card. Um, I mean, you'd really have to wait around a long time for the enemy to play something that is so valuable that you would want to put a copy of it in your hand. And then the other problem is... If it is something that is truly devastatingly powerful, um, most of the time, the types of minions that are so awesome that you would want to convert, like Izera, uh, you know, something like Variant, something like um, Scenarius, etc., uh, those minions are all like nine and ten mana costs for the things that you would actually want to convert. So when you have this spell you convert but then you still won't be able to play the minion that you want to play in the same turn which means that now you have to wait another turn so that makes this card uh, a little bit too slow and um, honestly I really feel like this particular card should have been either a one mana cost with this card text or it should have uh, lowered the cost of the minion you convert by to or at least lower it by one. I think by not having any lowering and just being a straight two mana, it's both overcosted and too slow to play. And I would rate this card as a three out of ten. I do not think it's going to see very much play. And to be honest, I'm a little disappointed that Blizzard even to printed this card because it's exactly what Priest did not want. Up next, one mana spell power word glory choose a minion whenever attacks restore four health to your hero um you know what this card is going to be pretty decent against specifically aggro face decks and it's going to be pretty worthless against everything else so the mana cost is acceptable in fact the mana cost is is very good for what you get but um since a you give so much power to the enemy because now they can choose whether or not um, you know that they kill whatever it is that you cast at this on or um, you know if you cast on their minion they can just not attack with it it's um, Because of that, I, I feel that the card is just not as good as a straight hill. Um, but my main concern with this card is that, once again, uh, you're dealing with a card that is a little bit too reactive for my taste. And this card just doesn't give much value except against a very specific type of deck. Specifically, one that goes to the face, to the face. So... I'm really not um, too head over heels about this card. I think it's certainly a tech card. And I would uh, think that it, probably too many people aren't going to want to run this card because it will be completely worthless in all matchups that are not uh, straight to the face. So 4 out of 10 is my rating for that card. Up next... Wormrest Argent, the two mana minion battle cry. If you're holding a dragon, gain plus one attack and taunt. 
making it uh, a 2-4 with Tom for 2 mana. Wow, what can I say? This card, you could not ask for more. In a Dragon Priest deck, this card is absolutely amazing. This card makes Dragon Priest more viable than it ever was before. You will see Dragon Priest decks being played now because specifically because this card exists. Um, a 2-4 with Taunt <clears throat> is absolutely amazing. Uh, that will certainly put you very far ahead against any kind of aggro deck. Um, but it would also be very good even against the mid-range or control deck. As a matter of fact, in um, most types of dragon decks, it would not be difficult at all to, uh, to take advantage of that battle cry. Um, even if you played this um, just as a 1-4, for 2 mana, a 1-4 wouldn't be bad. That's, that's a fine stat distribution. That's still 5 in stats, and you have 4 HP. That's really good for 2 mana. And this would still be very damaging against aggro decks. And it would still be very annoying against other uh, mid-range and control decks. So because of the fact that this card is good, whether you, whether it's being played at the optimum time or not optimum time, I would say this card is absolutely amazing. Definitely uh, two of this is an auto-include in any kind of uh, Dragon Priest deck. It, it's just simply impressive. I am very happy to see this card. And I certainly would give this uh, the high rating of all the Priest cards that were released for Grand Tournament. And I think one of the best cards in the entire expansion. I rate this as a 9 out of 10. Holy Champion, 4 mana, uh, 3, 5. Whenever your character is healed, gain to attack. Well, I think this is a very standard card. Um, it really isn't anything too exciting because of the fact that 3-5 as base stats is not really that great for a 4 mana. And most of the time, uh, you cannot really hope for this to get too much higher than a 5-5. Five five. So I think that, um, you know, for me personally, I probably would not be running this card. I think that this card was designed for a very specific type of deck, uh, one that runs dual pyromancers and uh, perhaps dual circle appealing. Uh, the point behind this card is that you're going to play it uh, with the with a certain combination of other cards in your deck, specifically that are geared towards getting a whole lot of damage out of this all at one time and probably hitting the enemy's face. I don't think that this has any kind of place in any priest control deck. I don't think it has any place in most priest decks. I think that this specifically uh, has a place in some new kind of deck that may surface involving Lights of Nauru and things like that that just are all about maybe dealing a massive amount of damage to the enemy's face by uh, getting a lot of hills in at one time and going forward but most of the time I think that's a gimmick that won't work out I think it's too slow I think that the setup is a little too um, a little too unrealistic to really get a lot of value out of this card I think most of the time you would be lucky to see it as a 5-5 five five. and even though it has like super great potential I think that most of the time uh, it's just going to be a below average card, or not below average, I would just say average. I would rate this card as a 5 out of 5. I think that uh, the potential is there, but I really not head over hills uh, for what it does. Confused, 2 mana, uh, swap the attack and health of all minions. Um... This spell is confusing, and it's confusing because it's very highly situational, and uh, I cannot really see too many applications for wanting to run this spell 
as opposed to just running a crazed alchemist. If uh, swapping the attack and health of minions is your thing, a crazed alchemist is going to do that and give you um, a nice solid 2-2 two, two for 2 mana stat line. Um, and you can be more specific with the crazed alchemist, whereas this, you'll be there'll be a lot of situations where you might want to use this but since the effects also affect other minions on the board uh, it may be hurting you at the same time you're playing it uh, I think that this card is kinda silly really and I I don't I think it's quite over costed by the way that's the other thing I would say that this effect probably could have been done for one mana um, I just don't see why a person would want to run this as opposed to Crazed Alchemist. I just feel that it's a lesser version of. There are too few and too many situational uh, times where you would actually want to swap around multiple minions at the same time. It's just too, it's too wacky. And I and I would rate this card as no more than a two out of ten. I would say it's very disappointing. Uh, the one mana spell Hill Flask, restore five health. Uh, this is a pretty solid card. It's not uh, amazing, but it certainly does have uh, some use to save yourself against the aggro decks. But uh, I think the main use of this card when I look at this card I see basically one thing for sure that I want to say about this card in my opinion it was designed specifically to use with uh, the Akanai Soul Priest this is kind of a deal five damage in any direction you want spell that is to be combined specifically with the Akanai I don't think that there is any chance you would run this card in a deck that wasn't also running dual Akanai Soul Priest. So when you can do that though, I think you're going to find that it's an amazing value because let's face it, 5 damage for 1 mana, that's pretty damn good. And that is certainly worth uh, the setup of waiting to have 1 extra mana and an Akanai on the board. But outside of that, I don't think that this card really has a whole lot of use, um, even though, yes, it can help you against the aggro decks to survive. Um, against aggro decks, hill cards, um, unless they are very, very, very high rates of healing, have proven to be ineffective. The more effective method is, is to play minions, removals, taunts, and things like that. Uh, so therefore, I could not rate this card as anything really high or really low it's five out of ten very standard i think it's going to be great with akanai and um just mediocre any other time up next the three mana uh three three shadow fiend whenever you draw a card reduce its cost by one you know what this is too slow uh for what it does it's too slow and uh, the effect is really not that strong anyway. I mean, at best, you'll usually draw one card. So you've already sacrificed some tempo by playing a 3-3 three, three that kind of does nothing. And then you draw the next card and reduce its cost by one. That's really not so great. And it's just not an exciting card. So therefore, I, I don't think there's really much to see here. Um, you know, compare it to... other cards that reduce uh, the cost of things like most of the time you can get immediate value or value at the end of your turn uh, this you kind of have to usually wait until the next turn because it's highly unlikely you'll be able to play this and draw at the same time I just think that it's kind of bad and uh, I don't think too many people are going to be thrilled to run this card. I would not run it, and I don't recommend others to run it either. I would give this a 3 out of 10 rating. It's rather disappointing. 
Up next, the 4 mana 5 4 Spawn of Shadows. Inspire, deal 4 damage to each hero. Okay. Now, most um, people, upon this card being revealed, most the opinion of the public has been that this card is really bad. One of the worst in the set. And, oh God, you know, ugh, why would you want this card? It's like garbage. 5 4 bad stats the 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 inspire is horrendously bad um you know it's just really horrible uh to that i would say that it's really it is bad this is a bad card they are right and the problem I have with this card is the fact that uh, that you have to use an inspire to take advantage of that card text which makes it a six mana card and I think that's a little too heavy for what you're getting out of it I think that this card obviously um, was to be run in a in an aggro damage deck uh, that runs you know cards like mind blast and maybe even villains etc but the fact that you have to also spend another two mana uh, to deal the four damage to each hero to me that's just a little bit too far stretching and i would say that in general most people are correct this card is bad um i would rate this as a three out of ten I don't think it's going to see a lot of play in any kind of decks, not even an aggro deck for Priest. Confessor Peltris, the legendary, 7 mana, 5, 4. Inspire, summon a random legendary minion. Um, this card is really bad in my opinion. It's very disappointing. I do not like it. The reason I don't like it is because... I see no reason uh, why you would want to play this card at 7 mana uh, and have the randomness of not even knowing what legendary is going to come. When you use Inspire, there's going to be a lot of times where you, you'll you you'll have to wait uh, until turn 9 to use this card. At 9 mana, you could guarantee you're going to have something awesome by playing something like Yuzera, why would you take a, a roll the dice and take a gamble at 9 mana with this card? It is completely unplayable without also using the Inspire in the same turn. So that's one reason it's really bad. You cannot play this card ever as a 7 mana card. It's a 9 mana card. And uh, that effect... A lot of times it's going to be bad too because you won't have the battle cries that come from the summoning of a la random legendary minion. So for instance, let's say you from 9 mana, let's say you played this card and then you also play you uh, hit the hero power and you got a loath that out of it. Okay, well that's not good because you're not getting the battle cry off a loath that. Um, you know, it's just not... The stats are absolutely horrible. 5-4. This dies as soon as the enemy's turn comes around. It surely dies. Um, so it, it's almost like nothing but a dice roll here. And most of the time, what you roll out of it, it wouldn't be great enough to be worth the risk. I think that uh, it's a terrible card. It is definitely the worst legendary now of the priest legendaries. Prophet Villain is not a good card already, and it's much better than the Confessor. So I think that this is one of those cards you'll probably never see played, uh, rarely if ever. And I would rate this card as a 2 out of 10. Overall, I'd say that the Priest cards were extremely disappointing, with the exception of the Worm Rest Argent. Uh, the reason that these cards are really bad is because they all seem to have one thing in common 
or two things rather which is that they are slow and reactive and that's the exact opposite of what priest players want they asked blizzard specifically please give us cards that are not slow please give us cards that are not reactive and please give us cards that are not situational that are sitting in our hand waiting for the board to be in a very specific situation while we hold a mass of cards that we can't play and you know what uh, these cards are exactly that they are slow they are situational and they are very reactive and most of the time they will be sitting dead in your hand so I think that uh, overall the the cards have been extremely disappointing I think that the only one that is worth seeing any play here is uh, the Argent and perhaps the Hill Flask Flash Hill with um, Akanai Soul Priest so moving on to the row cards uh, let's have a look here. Two mana, two two. Cut purse. Whenever this minion attacks a hero, add the coin to your hand. That's a great effect on this uh, card, but the fact that it has two two and doesn't do anything until it attacks makes the card uh, disappointing because now that's a really big if. If this card gets to attack, and since there's no way to give it charge. I think most of the time this card will not get to attack and it's going to be easily removed. Uh, therefore, even though the potential setup with the coin is really wonderful, I think most of the time you, this will never actually get to attack. And so therefore, I think that the card is quite weak and I could not rate it as anything more than a 4 out of 10. Buccaneer, 1 mana, 2, 1. Whenever you equip a weapon, give it plus 1 attack. Um, well, most uh, pirates are bad, but they synergize together, which is why the stats usually are kind of bad on pirates, the same reason the stats are kind of low on murlocs, because they understand that can get kind of out of control when you play a lot of pirates together, and that's why they make these stats not the best. Uh, a 2-1 is bad, even for a 1-drop. Um, the card text requires now the use of two more mana at least I think that uh, even if you did manage to give it plus one more attack it still wouldn't be good so and it can't have charge which means it doesn't really synergize with much of anything that the priest that 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 rogues currently run um i think that uh i cannot really think of any great application for this card i think it's just bad even in a pirate themed um rogue deck and it doesn't excite me and i don't think a lot of people are going to want to play this card i think you'll rarely ever see it it, I would rate this card as a 2 out of 10. 3 mana Shady Dealer for 3. If you have a pirate, gain 1-1. One, one. Um, that's very mediocre. And the reason why is because you probably won't want to run a lot of pirate cards in your rogue deck. Uh, not a lot of pirate cards were introduced into Grand Tournament. Despite having 132 cards, most of them are... Um, there are very few pirates and the pirates that have been put into the game are quite weak so therefore uh, I think that you won't really run pirates but even if you did the shady dealer himself is not a pirate which means that it only has half synergy in a pirate deck and even if you could manage to make it a 5-4 for 3 mana I think that's uh, not the end of the world that's not uh, enough of an advantage to be worth such a situational requirement and as a 4-3 for 3 mana it's bad so I would say that the card is below average and just generally speaking probably not worth it I would rate this card as a 4 out of 10 under City Valiant uh, 2 mana deal 1 damage 3-2 well this card has uh, solid stats for 2 mana. 3-2 isn't bad. 
where I take issue with it is that how often uh, are you going to be able to combo this car this early in the game probably not that often and even if you could combo it uh, one damage isn't really that great against anything other than like a shaka den or a face hunter deck uh, this is not really good against anything except for decks that run one HP minions so the only way I can really think too much about this card being useful is coining it out going second coining this out and maybe killing someone's leper gnome uh, but basically aside from that I don't think the card is really all that exciting but it's not bad but it's just not great uh, I would rate this as a 5 out of 10 there's just really not much to say there probably won't see play in most rogue decks uh, 3 mana beneath the grounds this spell shuffles 3 ambushes into your opponent's deck when drawn you summon a 4-4 four, four Nerubian okay so this deck um, is probably the most interesting card of the rogue cards that are being released for grand tournament uh, when I look at this card what I can tell you about it is that this card was designed for uh, a deck type that doesn't really exist yet which is the late game control uh, grinder drawn out type of rogue deck that's going to really stretch out into the long game and really dig deep into the control matchups um, in those types of situations this card can be really great um, if you draw if your opponent draws one ambush that's already giving this a fair value a 4-4 for 3 mana that's been delayed that's fair by the time they draw two that's amazing by the time if they draw three that is godlike so I think that uh, in a control deck that really draws the game out this is going to be an amazing card um, and you wouldn't run it in any other type of deck so the question is will rogues be able to run a control rogue deck will a deck like that surface that's actually viable and competitive now that's a, a pretty big question that I really don't know but uh, my guess is that um, some folks are at least going to give it a try and in that type of deck two of these is going to be really awesome and uh, just to clarify exactly what happens on the opponent's turn this is the card they get its ambush so when they draw this you get the 4-4 but then they get to summon a, they draw do draw a new card so it works similar to the bomb off of iron juggernaut from uh, the warrior minion okay so five mana Oh, by the way, in case I didn't give it a rating, uh, the Beneath the Grounds card, I would rate that as a 7 out of 10. I don't know if I said that. Shadow Pan Rider, combo gain 3 attack, 3 7. Usually they're saying that you can play it as a 6 7. Well, those are okay stats. Uh, not anything staggering to see here. It's just a solid minion with no tag, no no amazing synergy that uh, I can foresee happening here um, most people do want some special abilities with the cards that they play now so even if you did play as a 6-7 that's really not the most amazing thing in the world but it's just okay so I'd rate this card as a 6 out of 10 there's just not too much to say about it just a solid meaty stats Poison Blade, 4 mana, 1, 3, your hero power gives this weapon plus 1 attack instead of replacing it. Um, this card is horrendously bad. The community has had a very negative reception towards Blizzard about this card. A lot of people said this card is horrible. I, I would absolutely agree. It's, uh, it's just garbage. I would rate this card as a 1 out of 10. There's no way any no reason for anyone to run it. It is overcosted. The effect is very weak. It is very slow. 
and uh, there's just no foreseeable reason why you would want to play this card. It's just garbage, and I would not think that you're ever going to see this card hit play. I mean, this is this is this is worse even than that warrior hammer that attacks random minions. It's just crap. I don't know why Blizzard released that card. Uh, three mana spell Burgle. Add two random class cards to your hand from your opponent's class. Uh, this card is bad. I would rate this as a 2 out of 10. The reason why it's bad is because um, Rogue is the type of class that synergizes with Rogue cards and Rogue cards only most of the time. Uh, the only reason that Rogue works at all is because the class is stacked with l very, very low mana cost efficient spells and minions. Um, getting cards from another class is not good for Rogue at all. So you just pay three mana to draw, first of all, two random cards uh, that you don't even know what they're going to be. If you were to draw two cards from your own deck, at least you'd have some idea of knowing what they're going to do uh, because you put deck cards in your deck that uh, that you know synergize with the rest of your deck cards. With this, you could be getting complete garbage. And second of all, even if you got the best cards of a class, um, that's not that exciting for a rogue because the way that their class works is they have to have a very specific type of card has to be like low uh, mana spells, things that are very fast, things that are very efficient. It's the only way the class can work. And basically, by getting two cards from another class, it's just not good. And you won't enjoy this most of the time. And I would rate that card as a 2 out of 10. There's just no, it's silly kind of, there's no reason to run this card. Might I add, this very principle of not really getting a lot of use from your opponent's cards is the exact reason, one of the reasons why Gallowix, Trey Prince, Gallowix doesn't see play now. It's got solid stacks and a great ability for other classes. But you know why Trey Prince, Gallowix doesn't see play in a rogue deck? It's because... Number one, they don't like giving their opponent coins, but that's actually not the main reason. The reason why is because when your opponent plays cards and uh, puts a copy of it in your hand, you don't even want to play that copy back to your opponent because most of the time it doesn't work well for the class. It's not effect effective and efficient the way that Rogue's own class cards are, so it's not good. Anu Barak. Uh... 9 mana, 8, 4, return this to your hand upon death and summon a 4, 4 Nubian. Um, this card is okay in a very late game controlish type of rogue deck where you're not concerned about your health and you're not concerned about um, being in a rush for anything, not in a rush to kill your opponent, not in a rush to survive, but in a nice drawn out controlish type of deck where you have taunts you have hills you can play this and if your opponent removes it then you know you could just play it again and you get this 4-4 so in the control versus control matchup this is going to be a pretty decent card actually um, but in other types of matchups it won't be such a decent card at all um, again when I look at this I see that Blizzard is interested in pushing Rogue to have some late game options. Um, the card, I would rate this as a 6 out of 10. Again, I think it's pretty good, actually, in a control versus control scenario, but just not that useful in other scenarios. So that's uh, all the row cards. Um, overall, I would say that they're mostly bad cards. The few that were okay are pushing for control, like the uh, the the beneath the grounds and the Anub. Um, I would think that most of these cards are kind of bad because they don't synergize with any of the currently popular rogue decks. That's that's uh, something I want to point out, 
and that's kind of a problem actually with all of these row cards is that none of them really work well in a rogue deck that is currently exists that's in the meta that's in use you know oil rogue decks combo rogue decks miracle decks and all the things that we currently have access to uh, none of these cards help any of that at all so they're hoping to make uh, new deck archetypes uh, whether or not that's going to be a thing remains to be seen. Personally, I'm I'm very skeptical. I think, unfortunately, most of these cards probably will never see play. I mean, I think that uh, Rogue may not have gotten anything out of this expansion, just like Priest. And uh, I'm a little bit disappointed between both classes. So, that's the... Um, pre-review for part three and make sure to check out part four where i'm going to be covering shaman and warlock cards all right thanks for watching